Hey guys, with these downriggers, um, so when we get a bite, you're gonna see it start bouncing like this. And what you wanna do, whoever's up is gonna come over here, grab front back of the rod, and you're gonna give it a hook set. And that hook set's just gonna get the line out of the downrigger clip. It's not to get the hook into the fish. So as soon as you hook set, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get pop out of the downrigger clip, you're gonna get slack in that line. There's gonna be a bow. So what you'll wanna do, as soon as you set hook, is start reeling, and then you'll catch up to the fish. Once you catch up to the fish, just steady, keep pressure on them and bring them on in. everyone coming to you from Windy Lake Wenatchee up in the Cascades of Central Washington. We're here today with Shane Moon of Moon's Guide Service and Shane they just opened up the lake didn't they? Yep we finally reached our escapement for for the sockeye and uh, they gave us a four fish limit and there's about they estimate about 35,000 fish to show up to the lake so should be good fishing today. Well those are nice numbers Last time we were out here with Shane, we filled the boat up with sockeye, so we're hoping for the same thing today. Always an optimist at 6 a.m. in the morning, right? Oh yeah, yep. Stay tuned for the action. You're watching Northwest Fishing Reports TV. Mike, back road. <laughs> to get them on. Wow, how did I get so lucky? I get the first two right. fish. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Little guy, but we'll take him. We'll just go right to the floor here. The first rod goes off, I missed it. The second rod immediately comes on. And uh, gosh, I was closest to the rod, what can I say? Yeah, nice sock guy, Mike. Yeah. Got him. So that's a beautiful specimen and that'll cut up really nice, beautiful deep red yep. meat, eh? Yep, definitely. He'll eat good. Shane, it's amazing the journey these fish take to get here. They go all the way up to Columbia. Yeah, definitely. Through a couple dams, right? Yep, past sea lions and everything else. It's it's pretty amazing to make it all the way up here. Make a left turn into Wenatchee River. Yep. Then they got one more dam on the Wenatchee River. Yep, they'll make it over the Tumwater and, and and then end up in the lake here. Here they are. Yeah, nice one. Yep. Do you want to sit here? <laughs> yeah, whoever's up next. Sit. I'm putting the side ones about 20 feet and the back ones about 25. Um, not not too far back. You can definitely vary with it. It's um, I don't think it matters too much. Sometimes the shorter you put it off of the clip, the less you know the less slack you got to get out when you when you get it out of the clip with the fish on. Um, there is a it's like running short that we'll lose less fish. Shane, is there a reason we don't use bait 
Yeah, so in the regulations, it's a, a single point hook. We can use up to three single hooks, no trebles, um, and no bait, no scent, anything like that. And the reason is, is to protect the bull trout that are in here. And there's actually a pretty good population of them in here. Can you fish for those at all? Uh, no. So if we do catch them, it's release them in the water. Don't take them out of the water. You know, be gentle with them um, and just get them back, back in the water quick as you can. Here's a decent school of sockeye. Shane told me two rivers come into the lake. That's where these sockeye are headed. And as we move towards those rivers, there's a whole fleet of boats out here looking for these fish. So with the downriggers, I'm just gonna let them out about 15 to 20 feet out on the counter on the reel, and then I'll clip them into the downrigger. So just in the clip, just like that. Then we're gonna let them down to about 60 feet. You don't wanna to go too fast or that doctor will come back up and it'll flip around itself and you'll end up tangled. into this crowd of boats. I guess they're here for a reason. Either that or the, the bike's turning on. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Yeah, that's a better fish for sure. It's 
So you can see on this guy, we're just using a couple red hooks. No, uh, no bait, of course. No attractors on the hooks. And just a simple little dodger, about uh, 10 to 12 inches of leader. Exactly. Can't get much simpler than that. No. But it's effective. Nice one. There we go. Beautiful coloring. Good work. I like that. That's greeny. You can't go get to them. Yep. Crazy looking fish. Right at us, wasn't he? Yeah, he's coming right to the back. Oh, that's good timing. Yeah, nice sock guy. Nice one, Rob. Yeah, getting it done. <laughs> yeah, nice that one. <laughs> yeah, Gene, you really worked that into the fight, didn't you? Run kokanee. You love sea run kokanee, don't you, Hillary? I do. I love these. They're the meat is like a reddish orange, and there's a like a fat layer in it, similar to like Chinook salmon when you cook it or you smoke it. it it's got this white fat that comes out that's just delicious when you smoke it. So this is one of my favorite fish to eat and they're fun to catch. They give you a good fight, like the kokanee. They're just big kokanee that go out to the, the ocean. How many years do they spend out in the ocean, Shane? There's three to four year fish, so they will spend a year in the lake before they actually go out, out to the ocean, too. Take that rod from you. So these are three or four years old, Shane? Yes, correct. And these are coming in to spawn now, yeah. or? Rob, this really is a good example of why it's important if you've got a small craft to be really careful on this lake. Yeah, that wind came up suddenly, the conditions got tough, and uh, Shane made the call for safety, uh, being an experienced captain, to get us back here to the launch. Yeah, even though he's got a big boat and we felt quite safe in it, uh, it's not worth taking a chance for a few extra fish. This isn't the only place where conditions like that can happen. All around the Northwest, wind can come up, conditions can change quickly, and you gotta think safety first. Absolutely, so know the water, know your boat, know your limitations, and stay safe out there. Remember, life jackets float, you don't. So these sockeye, in my opinion, are probably one of the best eaten salmon. They eat plankton and don't eat fish like a lot of the other salmon in the river. So when you cut them open and look at the meat, it'll just be a bright red. Nice meat. Look at the look at that fillet. Just the color on it after swimming hundreds of miles up up the river in fresh water on their way to spawn and and they still are just cut bright red.
Ooh. Red meat. <laughs> You fish sock sockeye elsewhere, right? Yeah, so I'll start them earlier in the year, um, right out of Wenatchee, and fish all the way up to Brewster for them. Okay. Um, and that's still going right now too. So, but yeah, we've had a pretty good good sockeye run and a good sockeye fishery this year. Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, different techniques there in Brewster, or are you fishing the same way? Yeah, definitely. So in the river, we're we're able to use you know sand spades stuff like that. We can use barb hooks. We can use treble hooks. Um, so kind of the same concept as in a knot dodger, you know, a pretty short leader. Um, but we will run, you know, some coon shrimp on there cured and sanded dyed, you know, anywhere from orange, red, pink, something like that. So, sure. yeah, so definitely it you can't, doesn't hurt when you can put something that smells good on there. Shane, this was a really fun day out there. Oh, glad you had fun. I know it was kind of cut short because of conditions, but it was a good time out there. My first time on Lake Wenatchee. All right. Real quick, you want to go over exactly what we were doing there? This yeah. is the setup. Yep, so we were using a, about an eight inch dodger, um, an aught dodger. Um, we're running about 10 to 12 inches of about, you can run anywhere from 25 to 30 pound test. I like a little stiffer line. Seems like it twitches, twitches the hooks a little better. Um, this setup's got a little smile blade on it and a couple beads and then just two red hooks. Um, you can also run without the smile blade and beads too. Um, those are basically the two main setups we use out here and they're both very effective. So the key is the Ot Dodger. Yep. Does it matter what color or tape or? No, I mean silver. I mean, does brands either. I'll use Max, Max Lures, you know, Double D Dodgers, you know, Dodgers like that. It, it's just basically the size. The Ot Dodger seems to be the best. And then these two hooks, nothing on them. Nope, nothing on them. We can't use bait or scent in the lake and it doesn't matter, they work. You, we were usually what, 40 feet deep? We were fishing anywhere from about 40 to 80 today. Okay. Seemed like the most consistent was about 60. Um, that could vary day to day or year to year. So you were, um, you were working your electronics a little yep, bit. Yep, definitely, were... definitely watch your sounder. See see where you're marking most of the fish and try to stay right in, right in the area they're at. If guys want to get out there with you, either here on the Columbia, you do stuff year round, how yep. can they get a hold of you? Um, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Moon's Guide Service and North Flight Waterfowl. You can call me on the phone at 509-860-2539. That's the phone number. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and what else? You got a website too, right? Yep, it got a website. It's moonsguideservice.com. Thanks for watching everybody, it's Rob Holman for Northwest Fishery Reports. We'll see you on the water and online.